Yo, 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 it is now day three, and we are going to jump into Michal, or Michael. Some people call her Michael. I think it might be Michal, but, you know, whatever. So she is known for being Saul's second daughter. She was in love with David. She thought, oh, he's so handsome, he's so musical, he's so strong and brave. I mean, she was totally head over heels. And then the famous scene... Um, well, a couple famous scenes. She helps him escape when Saul is on a rampage to kill him. She lets him down out of the window. So go, girl. I mean, she's got some spunk. And then when David is coming back after uh, his victory over the Philistines, they are carrying the Ark of God, and David is dancing before it. And he might not be wearing too much. <laughs> And so it's kind of confusing to tell in scripture what he had on. Um, and she looks out the window and then it just, she, she feels hatred for him. She's disgusted at what he's doing. Um, and from that point on, she would never bear children for him. Um, so we're going to flesh out that story a little bit. Um, because it's confusing. You know, why does her love for him turn into hate? What happens there? So, um, back to our theme of expectation versus reality. Um, think about your crush, girls or guys. I know everybody has crushes out there. Um, have you ever had a crush on someone and then you realize they're not who you thought they were? And you have this picture of, oh, they're so this or they're so that. They're so nice. They're so noble. And then maybe you see them do something really dumb and you're like, oh, actually, they're very human. And maybe I don't like them so much. Well, Michal had a distorted vision of David. Um, she certainly had a young love for him. But after she let him down out that window, her dad gave her to another man. So she became someone else's wife. She lived away from David for years. And I think during that time, she probably blew up in her mind who she thought he was. You know, she had like the glory days in the back of her head of, oh, you know, my first husband, he was so amazing. He's David, he's noble, he's he's the promised king. And, and I think she had this idolized vision of who he was and who she thought a king should be, and the type of dignity a king should hold himself with and how he should run the kingdom. And then years later, David does become king officially over both parts of the kingdom and part of it's mainly a political move. He has um, Saul's trusted advisor Abner bring Michal away from her husband. It's a poor guy. She comes back to be uh, David's wife and that's to show, you know, okay, I have the kingdom back together now. And then things are different. You know, she's older. Um, and she has all these expectations of David, and then they don't get met. Uh, she sees him dancing, and instead of seeing his devotion to God and his childlike heart, she sees something that's undignified, foolish, um, even scandalous, because he's dancing with all these servant girls. And she, I think, saw herself above that. I think it really pricked her pride. Um, so I think we have a lot to consider when we think about Mikal. Um, do we have any people that we idolize? And maybe a leader, a teacher, someone that leads you at church, like a ministry leader or a preacher, someone you think it might just be perfect. <laughs> um, you know, every, they're very human. And what, how will you react when you see their humanity? Um, do you love who you think they are, or do you love who they actually are? Um, Mikal was kind of punished for her attitude. You know, she ended up living a very isolated life, like a widow, so she basically lived alone. We don't know if she and David ever had relations again, um, or if you know she just you know never saw him again. She just kind of stayed isolated in her quarters. We don't know if she had any good friends. Uh, I don't think she was very happy. Um, so her perception was not able to be changed. 
So I think if we're going to be happy with the people God's put around us, um, if we're going to appreciate them for who they are and how God is changing and molding them, our perception has to be flexible. It has to be like a new wineskin that can expand. So think about that. You know, is there anybody you idolize um, who maybe do you have a high expectation of? Maybe that expectation needs to come down. Maybe somebody needs to be taken off the pedestal. But then at the same time, think about who, uh, who you do appreciate and why. So if you want to read more about me, call. Um, go to 1 Samuel 14 and 18 and 19. Also in 2 Samuel, she comes again in chapter 3, in chapter 6. Um, so you'll see a lot of her. But um, quite a study, Nicole. That's just scratching the surface. And tomorrow I'll see you guys for day number four. So take care until then. Bye.